panel is going to come and read about that. But This is this is the true story of how the thugs uh, came about. This is the true story of how the thugs came about. Good. Oh. Okay. They were called X-ray specs. Put them on, and the world became a see-through paradise. You'd always see ads for them in the back pages of magazines like True Detective, Argosy, or Nugget, right next to the ads for the sea monkeys. But while the sea monkeys were an obvious ripoff, the x-ray specs you weren't so sure about, and looking at the crude drawing in the ad of some x-ray bespectacled hipster smiling from sideburn to sideburn as he sees right through this curvy broads party dress put dirty thoughts in your head. What if they really worked? If they did, they would be well worth the money. Which is exactly what Ed Sanders thought when he ordered them in the spring of 1964. Ed was just a horny young poet back then. And although he had a fat notebook full of empty pages ready to receive his blank verse, he had no receptacle other than his hairy right hand through which to relieve his innate horniness. So naturally, when he opened up his mailbox one day at two in the afternoon to see that his pair of x-ray specs had arrived, he smiled, that sideburn to sideburn smile. Ah, yes, he said to himself, the real fucky fucky. Ed immediately headed towards Washington Square Park, which he thought would be as good a place as any to try them out. But on the way, he had a thought. I'll show them the Thule, he said, again talking to himself. In those days, he was always talking to himself. It'll impress the shit out of him. The man Ed wanted to impress was Thule Kupferberg, who at that time was already something of a fixture on the village scene. Ed looked up to Thule. Thule was older, more experienced, and seemed to know just about everything. But this pair of x-ray specs, Ed was sure, would take him completely by surprise. <laughs> Ed got to Tooley's apartment and knocked. Wrapped in a brown army blanket and wearing a two-day two growth of stubble on his chin, Tooley answered the door. He'd just woken up. Look what I got, Ed blurted out. What the fuck, Tooley grumbled, rubbing the sleep from his eyes. He slouched over to get a closer look at the pair of x-ray specs Ed held out proudly with both hands. So you got some fruity-looking shades. Big fucking deal. I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> These aren't shades, man, Ed argued. These are fucking x-ray specs. They're the real thing, man. The real fucky fucky. The real fucky fucky. Shit, Tooley, you know what I mean. Tooley grabbed them and was about to put them on when Ed stopped him. Don't look at me with those things. Man. Let's go to the park. Let's try looking at some girls with these things. It's girls, Tooley mumbled. Oh, okay, girls. Tooley got dressed, and he and Ed walked to Washington Square Park, the x-ray specs burning a hole in Ed's shirt pocket. When they, got, when they got to the park, it was crowded, lots of people, lots of girls. They saw it sat on a bench facing the arts, the sun bearing brightly down upon them. Okay, Tooley said, give them to me. I get to try them on first. Ed pulled them from his pocket and handed them to Tooley. Tooley opened them up and with an exaggerated flourish put them over his eyes. Holy fucking shit, he exclaimed. Everyone is fucking naked. And that girl over there, see her? She's got tattoos of flames shooting out from around her nipples. And that guy over there, he's got two dicks. What a bunch of fucking freaks. Let me see, let me see, Ed shouted. No, wait. And that lady over there, she's got a shaved pussy. Nice, real nice. And that girl over there, too. And that girl. Let me see, let me see, Ed yelled, trying to grab him from Tooley's head. Tooley pulled away and stood up, doing a 360-degree turn as he gazed all around the park. I have seen the best bodies of my generation stark fucking naked. He pulled the x-ray specs from his face, bowed, and threw them to Ed, who immediately put them on. Ed looked all around. He looked up and down. He looked around again. What the fuck? I don't see anything. Everything just looks fuzzy and dark. What did you expect, Tooley said. You got ripped off. Shit, Ed cried. 
fucking shit. He dropped the x-ray specs to the ground and was about to stomp on them when Tooley stopped him. Don't do that, Tooley said. I think I can do something useful with those things. He stood up. Come on, Ed, let's check out the situation here. Tooley led Ed around the park as he carefully studied everyone. Finally, he pointed out a guy playing guitar. See that guy over there, he said? Yeah. Well, come on over and play along with this. Or better yet, just keep quiet. When they got... When they got close, it was apparent that the guy playing guitar was fucked up. Totally fucked up. Sounding pretty good there, kid, Tooley said. The kid, who seemed to be around Ed's age, looked up at Tooley and widened his eyes. Oh, uh, thanks, the kid said. Do you know what these are, Tooley asked, holding out the pair of x-ray specs? The kid studied them for a minute, squinting, and then said, No, what's that? These, my friend, are x-ray specs the greatest invention of the 20th century. <laughs> Tully paused a moment then added, they're the real fucky fucky. <laughs> the real fucky fucky, is that so? It is so. Me and my young friend Ed here have been in the park all afternoon checking out the girls with these things, looking not only at their faces and their legs, but their, in at their entire nude bodies. Because when you put these on, my friend, you can see right through their clothing. Is that so? <laughs> it is so. Totally nude girls. Do you like girls? Why, yeah, I sure do. Do you like <laughs> naked girls? Why, yes, yeah, sure, I do, the kid answered, sitting up straight. <laughs> well then, try these on. I think you'll like what you see. Tooley gently placed the x-ray specs over the kid's eyes. Before the kid could even begin to look around, Tooley began to shout, Can you fucking believe it? Look at that beautiful girl over there with the polka dots tattooed all over her tits and belly. And that girl over there with the blue and yellow stripes tattooed all over her body. Looks almost like she's wearing a dress, but she's not. She's nude. Totally nude. <laughs> Holy shit, the kid exclaimed, his mouth the gate. But don't leave them on too long, Tooley Vaughn, pulling them off the kid's head. You have to let your eyes get accustomed to these glasses before you leave them on too long. But once your eyes get used to them, you can wear them all the time. Is that so? It is so. The kid shook his head in amazement. Damn, these are some fucking great glasses. Where can I get a pair? In Europe, Tuli explained. <laughs> France, to be specific. You know how those French people are. They invented the French kiss, the French postcard, the French tickler, and now this. But it costs the equivalent of $300 on the French black market. That's the only place you can get them. Damn, I wish I could get me a pair. Well, I can sell you this pair for $300. <laughs> Shit, I ain't got no $300. Oh, that's too bad. Tooley scratched his chin. But hey, that's a nice guitar you got there. <laughs> oh, yeah? Damn nice guitar. I'll tell you what. I'll trade you this here pair of x-ray specs for that there guitar. Oh, yeah? Sure thing. Well, shit, yeah, cool. Out of sight, the kid said. Here, take it. He handed the guitar to Tooley, who promptly handed it to Ed. Thanks, Tooley said, and for you, my friend, your very own pair of x-ray specs, direct from France. He handed the x-ray specs to the kid as he and Ed started backing away. Don't try them on again just yet, though. Better let your eyes rest for a few more minutes. Then just let yourself go crazy looking at those naked girls. Okay, the kid shouted. Just think bare breasts, Tooley added as he backed further away. Yeah, and bare asses. Yeah, and pussy. Fuck yeah. Tooley and Ed quickly walked away. When they were out of the kid's sight, Ed turned admiringly to Tooley. Damn, Tooley, that was smooth. It was nothing, Ed. The kid was totally fucked up. It was like robbing a crippled dwarf with a Sherman tank. <laughs> but still, it was cool. Nope. The cool part's coming up, because now you're finally going to get yourself some girls. Really naked girls. But how? Tooley pointed to the guitar. With that, he said, how's that going to get me some girls? Don't you understand? Do I have to explain everything, Ed? <laughs> Tooley shook his head, amazed that his young friend still didn't get it. That's a guitar. It makes music. And you know those poems you've been writing? Well, to tell you the truth, they don't hold up very well by themselves. <laughs> They won't get you any accolades from the beatniks, and they sure as hell won't get you any pussy, which is where the guitar comes in. Ed scratched his head. You mean like, turn my poems into songs? Now you're getting it. Though now that I think of it, you and a guitar isn't quite enough. You'll never make it as a solo act. You're going to need a whole band. A band? That's right. 
Shit, I'll even help you out. I know a couple of other guys. We can all be in your band. Ed shook his head. Still, I wish those x-ray specs worked. <laughs> you still don't get it, Tooley said, raising his voice. You see, when you're in a band, girls will undress for you. You won't have to see through anything. Ed walked along in silence. They were on 6th Avenue now, making their way back to Tooley's apartment. Tooley looked straight ahead, thinking. He was always thinking. He began to walk more rapidly, rubbing the stubble on his chin, when he heard a voice a few paces behind him. A young voice, the voice of a kid experiencing his very first sense of revelation, his first understanding of the world and how it worked. Oh, I get it, Ed shouted to himself. And on hearing this, Thule felt old, very old. And while Ed was having his first sense of revelation, Thule was having his first real sense of sadness. He picked up his pace even more, then suddenly stopped until Ed was again walking by his side. After a moment, Thule, after a moment, Thule smiled. But his smile was nothing like that of the hipster in the ad for the x-ray specs. It was nothing like the smile Ed was now wearing smugly on his face. It was, no, it was an old man's smile, the smile of a man who'd found solace in knowing that no matter how old he got, no matter how weak and world-weary he became, he would always remain a few steps ahead of his young friend. Yeah.